Let's write a contract for a bulb. I've already defined the interface for IERC20 and then imported here. So let's start with the state variables. The first thing that we're going to need is the token that's going to be inside this bulb. So I'll declare as IERC20 public. The token will never change, so we'll make this immutable and we'll name it token. When a user deposits token, we'll mint shares. And when a user withdraws, we'll burn the shares. So we'll need to keep track of the total share and the share for each user. We'll keep track of the total share in a state variable. We'll name it total supply. So I'll type uint public total supply. Share per user, we'll store it in a mapping from address to uint. This will be a public state variable and I'll name it balance of. Next, let's write the constructor. We will set the token when this contract is deployed. So I'll type construct tor. It's going to take in a single input of address of the token. And then we'll set the immutable token here to the token from the input by typing token is equal to IERC20 token from the input underscore token. Next, we'll write some internal functions to mint and burn shares. The first function we'll write is mint. So I'll type function underscore mint. This function will take two parameters, the address to mint the token to and the amount, uint amount. This function will be internal, so I'll declare it as private. And then we'll increment the total supply. So the total shares will increase by the amount. I'll type total supply plus equals amount and then we'll allocate this amount to the user too. So I'll type balance of to increment it by amount. We'll do something similar for the function burn. So I'll copy this and then paste it here and we'll name this function burn. We'll burn from an address. This function will again be private since we're burning, we'll decrement the amount and then deduct the amount from the from address. And that completes the internal function to mint shares and to burn shares. Let's now write the function to deposit and withdraw. First, we'll write the function to deposit. So I'll type function deposit. It's gonna take in a single input of uint amount. This will be the amount of token that the user is going to deposit. This function will be external. When the user deposits a token, we'll need to mint some shares. We already discussed that the amount of shares to mint is A times T over B, where A is the amount of tokens that is being deposited, B is the balance of tokens before the deposit, T is the total supply, the total shares, and S is the shares to mint. The amount of shares to mint is proportional to the increase in the balance of the vault. And from this equation, we get that S, the amount of shares to mint, is equal to A times T divided by B. So let's put this into code. So we'll say uint shares. Now notice that when the total supply, the total share is equal to zero, then this equation does not make any sense since total share is equal to zero and we'll be dividing by zero. So when the total share is equal to zero, then we'll have to handle the amount of shares to mint separately from this equation. If total supply is equal to zero, then we want to say that the amount of shares to mint is equal to the amount that was deposited. So we'll type if total supply is equal to zero, then the amount of shares to mint shares is equal to amount that was deposited. Else, we'll follow this equation. So we'll say shares is equal to the amount multiplied by total supply and then divided by the balance of the token locked inside this contract. So we'll say token dot balance of address this. First, we'll mint the shares. So we'll use the internal function that we defined above by typing underscore mint to message dot sender for the amount shares. And lastly, we'll actually transfer the token from message dot sender into this contract. We'll type token dot transfer from message dot sender to this contract address this for the amount amount that was specified by the input and that completes the function deposit
Let's now write the function to withdraw. So I'll name it function withdraw. The input for this function will be the amount of shares to burn. So I'll type uint underscore shares. This function will be external. And when we burn the shares, we need to calculate the amount of tokens to withdraw for the user. And similar to deposit, we already discussed that the amount to withdraw is equal to A is equal to S being the shares multiplied by the balance of token in this contract divided by T total shares. Let's write this in code. Uint amount is equal to shares multiplied by balance of the token in this contract. That will be token dot balance of address this and then divided by the total supply. Just to be clear that we want to multiply before dividing, I'll put a parentheses here. And before we transfer the amount to the user, we'll first burn the shares, underscore burn. This is the function that we already defined above. For message.sender, the amount to burn is shares specified by the input. And once we're done burning the shares, we'll transfer the token by typing token dot transfer to message.sender. The amount that we're going to transfer is amount. And that completes the function for withdrawal. Let's deploy this contract. I've already created a ERC20 token contract that you can see over here. We'll deploy this contract and mint some tokens to a user. And then the user will deposit the token into the vault. After the user deposits, we'll generate some profit for the vault by directly sending some token into the vault so that when the user calls the function withdrawal, they'll be able to withdraw more tokens than what they deposited. So let's deploy the ERC20 contract first. I'll hit Control S to also compile this contract. And then I'll select the ERC20 contract and then deploy it. Next, I'll deploy the bulk contract. I'll select this, hit Control S, and then select the bulk contract. The bulk contract needs the address of the token, which we deployed over here. Copy it, paste it here, and then deploy. Next, we'll mint some tokens for the user. So I'll open the ERC20 contract and we'll mint some token to the first user. So I'll scroll down and then we'll mint 1000 token to the first user. Click on mint. Now before the user can deposit this token into the bulk contract, this user will have to approve the bulk to be able to spend, to be able to pull this token into the bulk. So make sure that we're still user one and we'll approve the bulk to spend 1000 token. I'll scroll down to get the address of the bulk contract, paste it here. And since we're all gonna deposit 1000 token, I'll copy this and put it in here. User one is going to approve the bulk to spend 1000 token and then hit approve. Okay, we're now ready to deposit this token into the bulk contract. So I'll copy this amount, scroll down, open the bulk contract, and user one is going to call deposit for 1000 token, and then click on deposit. Let's check the total supply. Total supply is 1000, and let's check the balance of user one. I'll scroll up to copy the address of user one, scroll down, paste it in here, and the balance of user one is 1000. Next, let's increase the balance of the token locked inside the bolt. Here we're simulating a bolt where it took this 1000 token and somehow it made it more. Now in DeFi, this profit is usually made by depositing into other DeFi protocols. But for this example, we'll keep it simple, just mint some tokens and directly send it over to the bolt contract. So I'll scroll up. But before I do that, I'll copy the address of the bolt contract and then scroll up. Since I cannot directly mint tokens to the bulk contract, what I'll do here instead is mint some token to user and then have the user transfer the token to the bulk. So I'll hit mint and this will mint 1000 token to the user and we'll now transfer this token to the bulk contract. Paste the address to the bulk here. We just minted 1000 token. I'll copy this, paste it here. And now the bulk contract has 2,000 tokens in total. 
1000 that was deposited by user 1 and the extra 1000 that was directly transferred. Next, user 1 will call the function withdrawal on the bulk contract. But before we do that, let's check the balance of the token. So I'll scroll up, copy the address of user 1, scroll down, and we'll check the balance of the token for user 1. And it is 0 right now. After we withdraw, we expect this number to be 2000. So I'll scroll down. User 1 currently has 1000 shares. There are 2000 tokens inside this bulk contract. So if user 1 withdraws all of his shares, then user 1's balance of token should increase by 2000. Let's call withdraw. We'll withdraw everything. So 1000 shares, paste it in here, and then call withdraw. If we check the balance of user 1 after we call withdraw, we burnt all the shares, so the shares is 0. Total supply is also 0. Let's now check the balance of user 1. Before it was 0, we deposited 1000, the bulk made an extra 1000, so the balance of user should be 2000, and it is.